All right, so I'm going to do a little wheat ear stitch here to give you a little demo. So I'm just going to make a chalk line from there down like that um, so that I have a guide for the center of my stitch. Okay, so you're going to refer to page 172 of Creative Stitching for the wheat ear stitch. And you will see that the difference between the closed fly and the wheat ear is the closed fly the V is done in one stitch, whereas the wheat ear is done with individual stitch stitches that always come back to the center line. So you're going to bring your needle up on the left hand side of your line like that. You're going to come down onto your line and go up the same distance over on the right hand side like that. So you're going to make one stitch to the left you're going to come back to the center and go down the center line like that and that will make the second straight stitch right there. Now you're going to take your needle, the back of your needle, and go underneath these two from right to left like that and back in the hole in the center where the thread is emerging and back up to the left. So that'll give you like a chain stitch around the base of your V. Then you come back in the same hole in the center and up to the right. Back to the center and down the center line. So you can see you're, all, you're always bringing your thread back to the center. Now we're going to go underneath just the two threads that make the V and go back down in the center and up to the left. So you can make these um, so that the V is wide or you can make it quite snug so that it gives you more of a sort of braided effect for a stem which looks good when you have it um, closer together as well. So there, go underneath the two threads on the left and right like this and back in center and up to the left. So you can see you get a nice sort of corded stitch like that. Over here this is a little bit wider so that is also the little wheat ear stitch right there. So these two here are this beautiful Portuguese knotted stitch and you can see this is done in size 3 painter's thread. This is done in silk and ivory and I'm going to do it in sock yarn so you can see. So you're going to start on the center line and we're going to work away from ourselves. So I'm going to take a stitch up the center line and come out halfway between making sure that this thread is on my right hand side. So I'm going to pull that through like that. So what I need is for this thread to be on the left like this. Now I'm going to take the back of my needle and I'm going to wrap it twice around the base of that stitch. Then I'm going to come up and from now on I'm going to take half length stitches up to meet the stitch here, making sure that the thread is on, sorry, is on the right like that. And from now on I'm going to thread both of these, so it's from the original stitch plus the new one and I'm going to wrap twice around that. Then I'm going to come up, take another half a stitch length, meeting this stitch like that, and then wrap twice around the two threads at the base. And that's what you continue doing. Take a half a stitch, make sure your thread is on the left here, and wrap around the two at the base here. Do one more. There's another half stitch like that. And, and look how beautiful it looks in this lovely round sock yarn. It, it really is defined and dimensional. So one more. There we go. Half a stitch and then wrap twice like this. Now always remember you use the back of your needle when you're going through existing threads. Um, but if I was weaving through, you know, a threaded back stitch, I would use the tapestry needle that has a blunt point. So have fun. Work some stems and connect your flowers to the ground.